This video is with Johnny Stewart, who is a Pennsylvania native and hunts the big woods. He's sharing about how he learned how to track deer in the snow, the things he looks for, and how to become a more effective tracker so you can tag more bucks when snow hits the ground. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Here we go. I want to circle back a little bit. You were talking about the advantages of using snow, and we had talked about this previously when we were down, down in the kitchen uh, just kind of chit-chatting, and I was explaining some of the hardships I had in Wisconsin, very, very cold weather, dry snow, fluffy type, uh, deep snow. And we were trying to use basically the roads to kind of speed scout, cut tracks to find a track that we wanted to kind of cut and follow. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we had a really hard time because the, the, the way the snow fell, it just kind of caved, caved in, in on yeah. that track. Yeah. And it was, we had a really hard time of you know, and it was cold out, so we didn't want to spend a bunch of, I mean, when I say cold, it was in the, I mean, minus 10, minus 9, minus 24 one day. I mean, cold, cold. We didn't want to spend a bunch of time, you know, tracking something we really didn't have any interest in. You made up a couple of good points. If you want to, like, just talk through the, not necessarily the gate thing, but the width thing, I think, is, is yeah, pretty I valuable. Yeah, I mean, them older, more mature deer have, a, you know, their, their chest is wider. It produces a wider, tra you know, distance. I know there's you know, you could read up on it. And I don't know, I just, from experience, I could, I could look up the road. Like you said, you drive a road and I could see how it's, and it's kind of like kind of their, their feet to me, just kind of like, they just kind of throw it down and face outward. Like, you know, they throw it, but there's width between their, their tracks when they're walking in their gate, if you can see one deer and then you get the, like, so there's like a combination of things that help you out. Like, like what Chad said with that snow, falling in it's just like you can't just say yep that's a buck because when the snow falls in what is it you know so you know there is a distance in in the in the gate and they do have a longer stride i'm i'm not exactly sure what it is but there's definitely a width that you could see um over opposed to doe like and then if you drive up and down the roads enough when there's snow you could see like i could fly up the road and see does because there's so many of them and then that you just you just that's burned into your head and then oh that's something different about that track and you just go you know it's wider and it has a longer gate but even there's times when i was unsure you know it depends on what part of the country you're in up north and, and there's some big does you know and, and then you're talking about two-year-olds might be the same size of big mature doe so i mean it can get a little bit confusing and i would always try to get on a track of a deer or a few deer at least follow them for 50 yards to help you take the average like i mean you could have a doe that slips down the hill and make it look like it's a 250 inch you know pound 250 pound buck you know a follow a, a, a ways and, and you know, the buck is going to kind of sometimes do his own thing, zigzag, you know, and he'll tend to go his own way. Even if he gets in with some does, you know, you just do a half circle or circle around and he'll usually go in his own way. And that's usually a buck. But if you get a situation where you got like, you know, maybe a big buck and a couple of two-year-olds, you might think like it's a doe and, and some fawns. But um, I, I know there's there's sizes, you know, and the, the track itself, if you have like a like a stiffer snow, you know, them, them bucks or like their holes where they put their legs down you know it's a uh, a lot bigger and it's kind of like more of a square where them does are kind of like i just call them holes and look at them little holes you know because they got them little legs going down there but they're close together but yeah i try to follow them for maybe 50 yards and it can be confusing you know you kind of, sometimes i ask myself man what the hell is this what am i fault you know what i mean but you keep going after it's like yeah, i think and you just like you take the average over 50 100 200 yards and if it seems like on the bigger end, the chances are it's a, a big deer. It could it could step on a rock or this and that, and like oh man, look at the size of that track. You know what I mean? It might be just a doe, but um, I mean there is actual measurements and size of tracks. But yeah, with that fluffy dry snow, it could it could be really hard because it's just like it just falls in, and and you could hopefully you know look at the overall width if you can single them out and then he sometimes them big ones don't want to walk on it they just fall on if they zigzag and they go around branches may have a bigger rack but um but then i i, I just kind of know from experience but there are actual inches and a deer's gate is 18 inches a, a, a big box is 20 i don't i don't know what it is but um yes yeah, where so. did you learn some of that stuff did you have like uh i mean you, you're a northern pa obviously you guys see a lot of snow i mean did you spend time with um Anybody in like the Adirondacks or like like in, in the Northeast, for example, you have you have the How Blood guys. You have all the guys that will track deer, and that's essentially how they hunt. And I know that kind of fits into your style. Did that is that something like you just kind of picked up on your own, or did you have somebody te help you along or teach you some of that stuff? Or I think when I was younger, where I grew up, a lot of the deer were immature deer, two year old yearlings. So I was used to seeing that track the size of the immature to the yearlings does and 
two-year-old yearling buck and even um, in the mud, you know, and or on a, a sandy or a dirt road. And, and then I think it was re- then I seen that religiously because that's all there was when I grew up. Then you'd see a big one like, oh, and so you just kind of knew. But as far as tracking deer, I learned, I mean, I think I used to chase deer. I thought I was just going to run them down, you know, and I didn't do too well on that i just thought i just got to keep keep and i jump and i keep running them around i'm gonna get i'm gonna get him and then i put 10 miles on but when i you know, it was not you know i keep going but uh, a buddy of mine it would uh from massachusetts i learned a lot from him he's probably he's in his mid-60s and he he kind of hunted with the benoits and, and and he tracked up in ontario and, and massachusetts and montana and i'm trying to get him to do some podcasts and so I've learned so much from him. I think I went tracking with him one time and and I said you got to come up to PA and track Tom I was like it's like it's tough up there and he's like yeah John I'll come up and hunt with you know so we went down a road cut a track and he pulled off and he just um said he was like his game face was on he said you just follow me you look left and right I said chances are he said you get behind me you look left and right because chances are when we're going forward the deer's going to be left or right because they jay hook and that's where they bed but it was i learned so much from his one little tracking trip and you know we went in the woods and he seen the deer ran you know 20 yards he said he ran because we drove by with a truck and then we said he said let's just wait a minute and then we just let him get out ahead of us because he'll forget about you, you know. And then he got into a bunch of doe, that buck. And he said, you stand right here and look. And there was tracks on top of tracks. And then he said, he went this way. And we started down. He's like, oh, we got to stop. Like, what's, all, what's going on, Tom? He was all, stop, go. I said, don't we just chase him down? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we just go after him. We're going to wear him out. Stop. He said, oh, we got to wait. And we saw him. Like, all right, like 15, 20 minutes. And then we go down there 200 yards. The buck stopped and looked back. You know, he's like. Oh, these guys coming after me. So then he, he said, they'll forget about you, you know. Then we went across, we come up his hill, and and uh, the deer started feeding it. And, he, you know, he told me, he's like, oh, he's close. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, he was dead serious. This deer's close, whatever. And then uh, we crested a hill down into, a, uh, into like, a kind of a valley. And ah, we're going to stop. I'm like, Oh, man, what's all this stop and go? He's like, let's eat. I was like, I'm so pumped up, I can't eat. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm ready to shoot this big buck. Sure shit, we walked up on him, bedded. It's about a hundred. I'm like, and uh, it jumped up, and and Tom took a shot at it running. I was like, holy, f- this dude just walked up on his bedded buck up in these mountains. I ain't never did that in my life. And it was just like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. and but like he would tell me stories of deer that he hunted up. He used to, he did Maine and then everybody went to Maine because of Benoit's and everybody were probably, then he started going to Ontario and up there he was telling me about the guys that um, hunted there would stay at camps and these people would bait the deer up there because the populations were low with with wolves and shit and so him and his buddy were the only ones that didn't sit on bait piles they'd go out track and he's talking like one deer per i don't know what is it five miles one buck or something you know what i mean something just ridiculous and he's telling me these stories and this one was pretty wild the wolves were pretty thick up there and this this one buck he tracked it would jump down through these rocks and that's how it got away from the wolves because it would jump off his cliff and he uh found a shed there and then the one when he was tracking him he got he fell and his rack hit the hit the rot the ground like this is how he got away from these wolves this buck it would jump off his cliff and the wolves wouldn't do it you know and he would hunt these deer for like eight ten days and probe he always i'm just probing around and he'd learn them and then he's like and i just talked to him here a couple of weeks ago and he's like i said tom i said i haven't killed many deer in the last few years i said um and i did a lot of podcasts talk about it i said but i just enjoy hunting like i I enjoy finding them. He said, John, hunting's way better than killing. You know, you get the experience. I said, I said that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not saying, I said, I could probably go out and if I wanted to kill deer, I, I could. But um, I just, but um, he would tell me these stories and that one buck jumped off that cliff and he ended up killing it, you know. But he would go for like eight, ten days, pro around, and then he'd be like, I'm go kill this deer. And no shit, he killed most of his deer on the last day, you know. And he, I remember the one story, he sent me out to Montana. Dude got the Montana and track, and I was, that was before I did that little track with him. And it's huge wilderness, you know. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is ridiculous, you know. But the uh, snow was melting. I was got onto one track, but the snow melted and got warm. But he told me the one, you know, story of the mountain lion was chasing a deer, and he was, ch- like, 
following a deer and he come up and the mountain lines to the left and the deer's to the right he's like oh, i didn't even see a mountain line i shot the buck <laughs> you know what i mean but i told him i said like, yeah tom i said you gotta tell you know but he got some crazy stories and really optimistic that's another thing you know you just be believe in yourself when you're out there hunting you know and, and don't just like sugarcoat it say oh yeah th- this is a spot i mean do you really believe this is a spot and this is what's going to happen and everything's going right or is you're just um just saying that but he was real confident you know but it's time and i said to him and he would almost have like his intuitions where you so you ever get in a spot tom where you just feel like your heart's beating you know this is it this is it he's like and he has stories like yeah i mean that happened to me a lot he said there's times i knelt down and pu- down, knelt down and pulled my gun up and aimed because i believed the deer was going to come through and he shot i'm like what i said i ain't got none of that shit going on <laughs> but, but he's like it's it's experience and instincts over time all these years and time you put in the woods, it all feels right. You know, the weather's right and the food's right. Like when I was in, in Ohio here in January, it just felt like, you know, if I, besides bumping that deer, it just all came together. You know, the it's the feeling you get from all that time. Because there's, like, I even say, like, these deer don't, can't explain how, why they bed in this spot or why they feed here. They just do from ex- experience and it's safe to hunt here. I mean, it's safe to feed here and hide here. And this is what worked and this is what to do. And and, this, and it comes instinctual to where all that time in the in the forest and scout and hunting, it just everything comes together to, you know, this is it. This is it. This is where like them bucks, they're bedding on that point. This is it. I know, you know, and it's not when they're younger. They don't just kind of scratch their chin. It's like, hey, uh, I wonder if this is good. It's like, no, I, I, I know this is where I need to bed. And then I was talking to Chad about one buck that I was following the one year and it was during gun season. And he had um, gone to maybe a piece of land that he wasn't familiar with. And um, because it was gun season and he kind of got bumped maybe out of his um, own little territory, there was snow on the ground. Like if you walk through a parking lot, you don't know where your car's at. Like this is what he was doing. He was like going over here, going over there. But I followed him and he was actually looking for a certain bed that he probably used only during hunt season he was only over there once a year you know what i mean because there was and then i bumped him out of that bed he had a big oak tree and a blow down i took a picture for like ideal beach brush behind him you know but you know he's he was just kind of walking around like oh, like where's my car he's like where's his bed at? and i followed him left and right you know what i mean but it's um it's that bed that he felt comfortable in you know and and, and it was just it felt right when he laid there and and you know everything looks right he can't explain. He can't look at the bed and be like, okay, see, I got that oak tree there, you know, and I got the wind right. This is why I like bed here. And then I get, he just like can feel it and sense this is the kind of place I want to lay in. And he goes, lays down. The, a lot of time hunting is like that, just being in the woods so much and learning and reading and, and asking yourself a lot of questions, which you are able to do, you know, and the deer can to just um, put you in the right spot, you know.